now i want to delve into the the communicative bit of a relationship which is a lot of times um, we are encouraged to be open about everything that we perceive and everything that we feel in a relationship and confide in our partner whether it's a relationship or if it's your if it's a close friend whatever it is don't leave anything unsaid is what they say uh i'm all for openness i'm all for being vulnerable but what if you find yourself in a situation where so far up to this point you met this amazing person up to this point you've spoken about everything under the sun you've not left anything unsaid it's been perfect so far and then comes along this one confrontation that you know you should be talking about you very well know on the face of it this is something that i cannot ignore this is something that must be spoken about for it to be normalized but then it's too difficult to talk about it at that point and you slide it under the carpet is that a slippery slope which leads to you sliding more things under the carpet or do you think you should go further down the line and bring that back you know revisit old uncomfortable issues or do you think you should take each one of those awkward opportunities and talk about them as a rule what would be the best way to go about it yeah i think um, i i don't think there are rules like that that you have to talk to your partner about everything i think imposing a rule like that makes makes it stifling right because everybody is different every couple is different so you don't have to talk about it but if you want to talk about it you must talk about it but if you're uncomfortable talking about something and you as a couple don't necessarily discuss everything it's okay to not discuss everything now having said that if something perturbs you so much if one person is feeling perturbed but you know you're not talking about it for whatever reason you will eventually talk about it and that's how you are going to relieve, uh, relieve yourself um but i think i think it's not healthy to not talk at all like there are people who avoid every single situation and they prefer that you know nothing is discussed uh that is a slippery slope because you don't know when it's going to blow off nobody knows when the whole thing is going to go kaput right uh but i'm saying there is no rule that everything must be discussed because i do meet people who say oh i don't want to discuss my previous relationships with my partner and i don't think it's necessary to talk about everything about my life it's not important for them blah 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 but there are some people on the other hand who feel like oh no i have to come completely clean with my partner and my partner's got to know everything and both are okay it's what works for you yeah there there's a flip side to what i just said with you which is Uh, i've heard people who are all for openness but their partner is way too uh you know nerd about being open and way too um supportive of being vulnerable that they talk about their feelings all the time and this partner goes jesus not again <laughs> i i want some me time don't don't talk <laughs> about yourself for a while <laughs> well it happens and it's okay it's okay right like uh, not with not with my partner but i have this thing going with my uh, four year old daughter where uh in order to encourage her to think and talk about her feelings uh whenever some situation threatens her or she feels upset we talk about it and there are times because of the pandemic now where she wants to talk about her feelings all the time and i'm like you know can you just shove it in there for a bit cuz <laughs> i'm not in the mood but you know you obviously don't say it to them but it's like it's okay i feel like sometimes sometimes it's okay to allow people the opportunity to share their feelings but you don't have to respond to it or you don't have to really indulge them in it i have a funny sketch in mind right now like imagine uh-huh. this partner comes up to you and says no we must talk about every single thing that we feel instantaneously not keep anything inside and they start talking about their feelings and you say shut up i don't want to hear you because that's what i feel right now <laughs> just imagine, just imagine i think that's that would be funny and yeah, I totally yeah. do that yeah. as a prank and and here's the thing right i think the problem is 
we think it has to be a certain way and like relationships have to fit in to that bloody tem- uh, template and if they don't then you know there's something wrong with that relationship like oh that's yeah. such an unhealthy relationship like we have to just stop assessing people's relationship with somebody else's like you know template or whatever and that i think there is so much work that needs to be done in terms of just normalizing relationships yeah. it is okay for people to be like you know what leave me alone i don't want to talk right now just you do your thing i do my thing and it's yeah. Yeah. and these are phases like you know the like with my partner uh, with my mm-hmm. husband we go through those phases where you know where both of us finish work in the evening and it's just mm-hmm. you would have had such a tiring day and you look at each other you pick up dinner and you go to your own sort of computers to sit and watch your own thing because you can't share the tv and you don't have the energy to coordinate to watch the same thing <laughs> but that's uh-huh. a phase that's a phase that doesn't mean it's how our relationship is because the following week when work is not too stressful is sitting and chatting and you know having a good time and you're like cuddling and cozying up and that's that happens too right like nothing not, nothing is permanent or like you know if something is permanent okay maybe there is an issue but if it's not permanent don't worry about it you know you're married you have a kid you live in the same you know house you're in each other's face all the time what is your time out where you sort of disconnect from everything and is that necessary yeah it, it absolutely it's absolutely necessary right you know, every person has different parts of them there's a part of me that's a daughter there's a part of me that's a mother there's a part of me that's a wife sister friend so many parts of you and there's also me and i do take time out for myself there are every every evening after my daughter goes to bed um there is some time for myself and there is also some time allocated to spend with my husband and some days we respect those boundaries some days we don't depending on how each of us are feeling uh but in general you you do sort of discuss these things and make time for yourself and it's absolutely not necessary because otherwise you go mad earlier you had commute where you had your your time you're like listening to a podcast reading something just not talking to anybody but now since that's not there you have to consciously make that time and that's okay because people think relationships are all just about like being a couple like every little part of you is attached to every little part of the other person and that's not sustainable right if you want to spend 20 30 40 50 years with somebody you will go nuts <laughs> you have to move like conjoined twins right like yeah yeah, yeah I, I think i think that's why that's how the picture of a relationship has been painted and gen z's and like you know these um young millennials feel like oh my god i don't want to be joined to anyone for the next 50 years yeah yeah now since we're on the topic of millennials and gen z's what, what do you predict the next 50 years or the next 100 years to be like in terms of the marriage landscape are things going to change or is it is it still going to be the is the same will yeah, more people opt in for marriages or less yeah unless unless there's a revolution in the next 10 years in terms of how relationships are perceived and you know we normalize relationships uh people are still either going to be one part of them is going to be afraid of getting into a relationship with the other part still craving it because you think that's what completes your life um unless you change that narrative and normalize being single normalize relationships i don't see that i don't see that changing at least for the next i don't know 20 30 years at least at least for one more generation like i don't i don't see that changing because there are still a lot of people who want to get married right right hey, uh, recently i mean it's not right to get a lot of inspiration from memes memes should be just memes but they make me think sometimes <laughs> i saw one that made me think back in the 1930s and 1940s you were 21 22 you would you know step out go participate in the war be a part of military be married by the time you were 22 have 
I don't know, four or five kids by the time you're 28 and you would have a home and even look at your parents, right? They, they had kids by the time they were my age and mm-hmm. they had a home in a few more years. But now, why have we become such, such soft and mushy humans where at the age of 30, we're like, I don't know who I am. I need to find myself. I don't know who I am. Why will I get married to somebody else? Whom also, I don't know. Why has this, uh, you know, lag in becoming a functioning member of society taken place? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't really know the answer, but then, you know, I have my theories around it. Um, I feel like it is easier to procrastinate. It is easier to not make a decision. It, there is an option to do it today. Like, for instance, um, you know, talk about like breakups or divorces or whatever, right? You didn't have the balls to do it back then because you didn't know there was Tinder and like, you know, 7.5 billion people are at your fingertips. Like they were not. You had to go out there, build a bloody relationship, etc. Even today, you have to do that. It is not easy. But these apps, etc. create this illusion that, hey, you know what? Does not work? You know, you can go find someone else. And that's what even Daniel Strauss talks about, right? If it's not working out, there are like 7.5 billion people out there and you will find someone else. Except, yeah, you'll find someone else. It is going to be difficult in a different way. You just don't know that. Um, But like, it was not easy then. You had to make it work with whatever you had. You didn't have so many options. Like you had only certain options in terms of jobs, you had to right. pick one of them in order to have a living. Today, there's so many options. You don't have to be employed with two companies. Like There is a lot of options, which is why people, uh, when you have a lot of options, you don't want to settle. It's like this. It's like this. It's like you've gone to a buffet. There are a lot of options. You don't want to fill your stomach up with just the main course. You want to try all of the little bits. And uh-huh. you don't want to order one dish and just eat that one dish. right? It's like that. I think that's a brilliant point that you make there, which is procrastination is enabling platforms like Tinder because every time you, you match with someone, you go out on a couple of dates and every time you sense the slightest sense of difficulty or confrontation, you jump to the next person and yeah. wait to get to that point again and then jump again. So you, all you're doing is wrecking your relationships with people because the slightest difficulty came and bothered you. Yeah, and it's not even just that. It is also what the chemicals in your brain do for different things. Like, for example, when you get a new match and when you get a new match with someone exciting, Uh your head lights up. Yeah. But that doesn't happen when someone says, when someone you match with is saying, hey, what are your weekend plans? It's not the same reaction in your head. Correct. Right, so you can suddenly switch. You're like, oh, screw this person who's asking me about my down weekend plan because I'm match with this hottie right now. So <laughs> I'm moving to this activity. Right, it is. It is also how these things are designed and how they play with your head. Because right. this happened to me, and I was like, oh shit, yeah, I actually just ghosted somebody because their question was boring. <laughs> right. It didn't excite me, and I don't want to carry on and. Yeah, the, I think the options, the options, or that's what makes you feel like anything is possible in this world. Although I don't know if that's the truth. I think, you know, what that reminds me of, I was having this debate with a friend of mine who is all about, you know, you should get settled by the time you're 27, you should, you know, have a stable job. And he's sort of old school, he's a, a year older than I am. And I respect all of his decisions. And we were having this debate the other day. And I was just trying to pull his leg. And then I hit a gold mine where I was like, oh, why is this not possible? So you have subscription services for a lot of these platforms, right? Mm -hmm. Amazon Prime, you pay a year's membership. And you you have a free trial. There's a one-month free trial to see if things work. Why is there no such free trial concept in terms of relationships? And why can you not go on a yearly renewal basis? (laughs) <laughs> You're like, this year, 2021, I want to renew our membership together. Yeah, no, actually, um, 
there is something like that in japan where you can rent a family like you can rent them wow. for a, rent them for a month uh <laughs> <laughs> there is actually such a thing um and uh Yeah I was seeing a I was seeing some like a documentary or whatever about it and it felt so strange I guess I guess in a place like I guess we will get to that place when people are no longer in like <laughs> like committed relationships I guess you know it might become a thing like 100 years from now but although I see it coming much later in India because our culture is so much about commitment Almost and yeah yeah no but i also do believe that i might sound like an auntie here but then i i do believe commitment plays such a huge role in seeing any decision through right like the moment you're committed all your actions will be wired around fulfilling that commitment yeah um yeah. so i think when there is no commitment it's harder to see like relationships live longer because i know a lot of people have this whole argument about oh why should you get married you can just live together and you know why do you need this marriage thing or whatever i feel like marriage imposes a level of structure and commitment that is a little bit more stringent than just living together and um, that helps you see through that relationship i think correct I do have friends who are not I I do have friends who are not married and you know who are raising families together with their partners and so on and maybe it works in a different society but not yet in India although my whole argument for settling down um in life for like you know is is different it's like it really gives you so much mind space to do other things with your life otherwise yeah. it's this constant nagging thing in the back of your head oh my god i've got to find someone i've got to settle down with someone for 10 years or like I'm sure years. Energy leak, yeah yeah because that's a, yeah that's a massive energy leak that you just need to plug in very quickly to be able to achieve the other things that you want to in life yeah but like so that goes back to his point about oh because you want somebody in your life and you think that piece is missing you just take the wrong jigsaw and you like jam it in the place Um, I don't know if there is a right and wrong honestly right like cuz yesterday because you know we were going to talk about it I was talking to um Karthik about it and I was like man in the last 10 years we've done so much with our own individual lives apart from doing things together that I don't know if we'd have the mind space to do it if we were both single looking for a partner because that right. whole partner search is such a massive time sink people don't realize yeah 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 uh, when, and when you have someone who we can trust and yeah talk about everything with yeah. you, you get a sounding board for all of your ideas and all of your yeah. ambitions and yeah you have a vetting mechanism for all of them yeah other than yourself yeah but the flip side is also that the whole coordinating and doing things together is also a massive time sink and i'm going to give that to you like where he says <laughs> you know you have to like coordinate everything like, you're right you're right coordinating is is a is a pain and it but, can sometimes yeah but if you ask me it is painful i hate it i you know if i could have it another way i would but i feel like that's a very small trade off i am making for having a family for having a witness to my life for having somebody who i can share the rest of my life with right um yeah, yeah. and depends on what you want i mean if you don't want anyone to witness the rest of your life yeah yeah cool yeah. that's cool i need someone yeah. maybe i needed a bit of validation <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe it <laughs> <laughs> at, at this point i want to revisit a point that we spoke about earlier and you said that being in a relationship is all about coordinating this compromise sometimes you got to listen to what the other person wants and sacrifice what you want for the short term it's a lot of hard work making something work um and you said that the centerpiece isn't just a one like it's not a one time slotting it into the jigsaw puzzle yeah. there's constant work that goes into it you have to move pieces around and yeah the jigsaw puzzle becomes complete over time now the problem 
is with the latest generation we spoke about millennials and gen z and they talk about their fear of commitment there is this whole commitment phobia that is being spoken about excessively now i want to take a bold stance this is an understatement i want to take a bold stance please don't nobody give me threats i don't think it is commitment phobia i just think it is phobia of dealing with difficult decisions you want to constantly postpone a decision and it doesn't just apply to commitment it just it applies to your you deciding about your career it applies to you deciding where you want to eat for dinner it applies to who you want to spend your vacation with every single thing commitment is just one of those areas where you're struggling anything that is difficult people cannot deal with and this is because simon sinek says this all the time is it's that the last generation which is i'm going to club our generations together the previous generation has been subject to the worst parenting in history because we have been given consolation prizes there have been prizes for coming in as runners up and we feel entitled with every single thing in life i feel entitled to get somebody's attention i feel entitled for the best seat at dinner when i go to a restaurant this never was the case earlier and when we come and hit difficult situations where we need to decide we feel entitled to get the best possible outcome out of it which doesn't always happen so uh, and tim ferris says this on his show it is uh, and he says that my biggest talent and my biggest flex is that i am 100% okay with suffering i can suffer more than the next person so i can outlast the next person millennials and gen z's they just they're suffering through their own indecision rather than anything else they don't want to suffer through the outcome so they suffer through the indecision now yeah. i don't know if this makes sense but this is just yeah. what i feel yeah and i think what is a decision a decision is you committing to a certain choice Yes, so yes. it boils down to commitment we don't we are almost um trying to not nurture commitment as as a as a virtue or um we're saying you don't have to be committed um yeah. almost fueling the whole indecision right you feel like any decision that you take is a two way door it can be reversed don't worry don't be afraid so i think we're saying all that to encourage people to be more risk taking for people to go out there push the boundaries see what else is out there but i think in the process you're also looking at, yeah, yeah you're also looking at that as you don't need to commit to anything yeah right uh now whether that's a good thing or not i really don't know but i believe commitment sort of helps you um do your best correct when you know you don't have an option but to make it work you try a lot more things than you would if you knew there was an exit door that you could take yeah now i wouldn't i wouldn't apply this uh as a blanket decision for everything because there are some very horrible relationships where one person is really inhuman and where one person really doesn't respect the other person and that is absolutely not a relationship where you should keep trying and you know yeah. um uh, try to make it work so case by case basis if you feel like this is something you will simply not take in any world uh um, you know you should absolutely sort of like get out of that relationship but uh i also think commitment is important it is it is it is very different for you guys the world itself is quite different so it's very natural that you feel the things that you feel right now i feel like even though i'm 24 years old i'm an old soul and i have more affinity to rather old school things than the things that folks my age are up to i think it's so interesting to even see your questions because it is so different from the ones that i have in my head right now and i can imagine it's not just age but it's also uh, things that you're exposed to right now and the options that you have that make you feel the way you feel 
uh, which is quite different from how things were even 10 years ago um, correct which is hard for me to imagine and you know one needs to experience that to really be able to understand what life's like for you right and yeah thank you for recommending that show because um i feel like off late i i only speak to people who want to be in a relationship and who want to get married and i don't see the flip side of it when people are like oh my god don't get into one uh but yeah this is useful i think this could be a uh, are you going to further recommend this to other people whom you know the show yeah the show no i want to make money no i'm kidding <laughs> 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 no, I, I, yeah no i think the show was interesting and definitely interesting uh from a expand your world view perspective um uh but yeah from a stand up comedy uh whatever i think <laughs>